form be suspended? Without objection. I come to the floor to give you an example of some of the hip hypocrisy that goes on in this town. On February the 11th last week, Special Counsel Durham made another filing with respect to the case against Clinton campaign lawyer Michael Sussman. I've spoken to my colleagues before to discuss Special Counsel Durham's findings in this matter. Today, I want to highlight new evidence that has come with this filing. Special Counsel Durham's filing said that at trial, his team will establish that a firm tied to the Clinton campaign misused internet traffic pertaining to four entities, a health care provider, Trump Tower, a Donald Trump apartment building in New York, and the executive office of the President of the United States. The Clinton campaign essentially spied on the Trump, and Trump campaign. After Trump was elected, the Clinton campaigns worked continue. Now, how did they do it? According to Special Counsel Durham, the Clinton campaign worked with cyber researchers to infiltrate private and government servers connected to Donald Trump. Their main conduit was Tech Executive One. In July 2016, according to Special Counsel Durham, I quote, Tech Executive One also enlisted the assistance of researchers at a U.S.-based university who were receiving and analyzing large amounts of Internet data in connection with a pending federal government cybersecurity research contract, end of quote. In addition, Tech Executive One had access to dedicated servers for the executive office of the president as part of a, quote, sensitive arrangement, end quote. This individual, quote, exploited this arrangement for the purpose of gathering derogatory information about Donald Trump, end quote. According to Special Consul Durham, the Clinton campaign through Tech Executive One abused, quote, non-public or proprietary internet data, end of quote. One question that needs to be answered is whether any of this exploited in information and data included classified information. The available facts show that the Clinton campaign abused federal government contracts to exploit government information to use against Trump. If the Republicans did the same thing, we all know you wouldn't hear the end of it. The Democrats and media would want another impeachment of Trump. All of these outrageous acts were done to create fake connections between Trump and Russia. That included the fake Alpha Bank narrative. That narrative centered on allegations that Trump had secret communications channel with the Russian bank. It was all fabricated by the Clinton campaign. There was nothing to it. And let's not forget 
that Jake Sullivan spread the fake Alpha Bank narrative, and he's spread it far and wide. Sullivan is now President Biden's national security advisor. He needs to answer for his role in this entire fiasco. Even the Obama administration servers communicated with the same Russian servers that were apparently the basis of the false Russia connection. Now just think how ridiculously this rollout was. With this so-called evidence against Trump in hand, on February the 9th, 2017, Sussman provided updated allegations to an unnamed U.S. government agency. Of course, he left out the Obama administration's connections. Some of those connections included that Trump and his associates use rare racial-made wireless phones near the White House. Durham said that there was no evidence of that. But some evidence is very, very clear. During the election, the Clinton campaign spied on the Trump campaign. After Clinton lost, the Clinton campaign spied on the Trump administration. And they did it by abusing federal government contracts, and they did it by abusing their access to government information. Trump has reportedly said that the Clinton campaign spied on his campaign. The mainstream media either ignored him or called him a liar. Based upon Special Counsel Durham's filings, Trump, it turns out, was right. The Clinton campaign, mainstream media, and Democratic Party did what they could do to destroy Trump, no matter the cost to the truth or the cost to the country. The House Democrats, with the backing of corporate media, set up the January 6th Commission to investigate what they termed the big lie. Where are those on the January 6th commission when it comes to investigating the big lie where the Clinton campaign worked with the sitting Obama administration and taxpayers' money in trying to destroy their political appoint, opponent? That's just as dangerous as our democracy. As I conclude my remarks, let me come to grips with this absolute fact. The Clinton campaign's conspiracy of dirty tricks set in motion a chain of events that have ripped this country apart for years. So much for peaceful transition to power. Now what's disturbing to me about the hypocrisy in this town is that we have the First Amendment freedom of press, where I see journalists as keeping government honest. And I don't see the people that knew that they were wrong about this issue for four or five years are ne ne willing to admit that now they haven't done their job properly. And a lot of things that make made government dishonest, and I just told you how this was done, don't seem to be worried about policing the political system the way they should. I haven't seen anybody apologize. I did see a rerun of something that happened October 20th, within the last couple days, an interview between one of these journalists and President Trump, where President Trump was trying to tell people that this stuff was going on, and they said, no, there's no proof of it. There's no proof of it. Are they saying today there's no truth of that? I think we all know 
that Trump wasn't in government, maybe even lacked some understanding of how the political system works. But he came to town to challenge the elite that are inside the Beltway and change things. And somebody knew that he was up to that. And they wanted to stop him from doing it. So they spied on the campaign so he wouldn't be elected. And once he was elected, he spied on the, on the executive office to see what they could do. I remember a story that a friend of mine told me about talking to some Democrat senator in February of 2017 who told that friend of mine that Trump would not be president by the end of that year of 2017. Now, whether that senator knew what he was talking about, I don't know, but I reflect back on that conversation I had with that friend and I wondered if they really thought that by doing what we know now they were doing, that they were going to be able to get him out of office before the end of 2017. So I give you a little example of what I call hypocrisy in this city. I yield the floor.